souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Jim died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Please join in the processional song on Eagle's Wings, Glory and Praise Book number 126.
life. In life, Jim cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, bless of my Father. The cross we have brought here today was carried by the Lord Jesus in his hour of suffering. We place it now on the coffin as a sign of our hope for Jim. Lord Jesus Christ, you loved us unto death. Let this Christ cross be a sign of your love for Jim and for the people who have gathered here today. Jim had a great devotion to our Blessed Mother. We now place his rosary upon his casket and pray that the promises that it contained may now be obtained by Jim. Let us pray. O God, you are water for our thirst and manna in our desert. We praise you for the life of Jim Costigan and bless your mercy that has brought his suffering to an end. Now we beg that same endless mercy to raise him to new life. Nourished by the food and drink of heaven, may he rest forever in the joy of Christ our Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Please join in the responsorial psalm, number 35, in the glory and praise. Join the choir on the refrains, please.
letter to the Corinthians. Be ambitious for higher gifts, and I am going to show you a way that is better than any of them. If I, if I have all the eloquence of man or of angels, but speak without love, I am simply a gong, booming, or a symbol clashing. If I have the gift of prophecy, understanding all the mysteries there are, and knowing everything, and if I have faith in all its fullness, to move mountains, but without love, I am nothing at all. If I give away all that I possess, piece by piece, and if I let them take my body to burn it, but am without love, it will do me no good whatever. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
On behalf of all the priests here and the priests who have known and loved Jim, on behalf of all of our parishioners, and speaking for the university community, Jim's colleagues and many students, and indeed in speaking on behalf of the entire Hayes community, I extend once again our heartfelt love and sincere expressions of sympathy and support to you, Nancy, Jim Tom, Jennifer, Jeannie, Jane, Roy, and Alexi, and to all of Jim's family and friends. And I assure you of our continued love and support and prayers in the days, weeks, and months ahead. In the past 48 hours, I doubt if there's one person in this church and many others who couldn't be here this morning who haven't in some way smiled, laughed, joked, or just breathed a little easier in some way, reminiscing about the man whose life we celebrate in this Mass. Jim Costigan has made a lasting impression on all of us, has made our life somehow easier and richer, inspiring us by his dedication, courage, ability, and insightfulness, delighting us with his humor and optimism, and teaching us lessons in and out of the classroom that will stay with us a lifetime. What a wonderful tribute you all give to Jim by your presence today, and by your letters and calls to him and Nancy in these past few months. And what a beautiful tribute there was in the paper, and that so many of you gave last night at the wake giving an account to others and to God about Jim's life. As you gave those glowing testimonies, I couldn't help of what Jim might be saying, something like, I'm sure glad my wife is here to hear all these things. But you know, those memories that you all have will not only be for the family, but for all of you as well, a source of strength, laughter, and encouragement for years to come. For several months now, Jim and I have been visiting and laughing at length about our attitudes toward life and death. And as Jim prepared for his death, he had some rather specific instructions about what he wanted said today at his funeral. Earlier this week, when Jim had taken a turn for the worse, and we thought we were going to lose him then, Nancy allowed us again, as she did so generously many times, a chance to spend some time alone. When I returned up the stairs, she of course wanted to know what all of the uproarious laughter was all about. And I had to be honest with her. I said, Nancy, I said, we were planning Jim's funeral. Only with Jim Costigan could you laugh heartily while making the final preparations for a funeral. He said to me, Father, keep it simple. Keep it reasonably short, and don't make the whole thing all too solemn. We don't want anybody to think that somebody died or something. He said, tell Nancy how much I love her. Tell the kids how much I love them and care for them. And tell the people here how much you mean to him, how much he cares about what happens to you, and he said to say, if he's offended anyone in any way, through thoughtlessness, oversight, or neglect, to say, I'm sorry. The Father, he said, tell them above all about where I get my strength. Tell them most of all about the source of my energy, the source of my courage, the source of all my optimistic thinking. Tell them, Father, 
about the Eucharist. Brian Tracy, businessman and inspirational speaker, says that circumstances don't make the man. No. Circumstances reveal the man. Jim didn't start loving the Eucharist and the church, loving people and teaching and life when he heard he had cancer. His cancer wasn't the cause of his faith or wasn't the cause of his ability to love. It was already there before the cancer. These last few years weren't Jim's finest hour. They were just continuing an attitude that was already present. As Jim himself said, there are many things in life you can't control. They're given. We have to face them. But there is one thing we can control, and that is our attitude. Don't quack like a duck. Soar like an eagle. My faith and devotion to the Eucharist allows me to soar, Father. God is the wind beneath my wing. Thomas Aquinas wrote that this is the food that appeases the hungry of the devoted heart. Faith is its seasoning, and devotion and fraternal charity its relish. The teeth of the body may break this food, but only an unfaltering faith can savor it. The effect of our communion in the body and blood of Christ is that we are transformed into what we consume. That we are what we have received. That through our encounter with Christ in the Eucharist, we in turn become the Eucharist for others to inspire them, to encourage them, to give them hope, to teach them. We are a part of a people of faith who have for almost 2,000 years professed that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. When we receive communion, we are receiving Jesus' body and blood. It looks like bread and wine. It tastes like bread and wine. But through the wonderful mystery of consecration, those substances become the real presence in our very midst. Jesus becomes tangible for us. Jesus loves us so tremendously that he becomes a tiny piece of bread just so that he can be close to you and me every day and right here today. See how very personal God's love is for you, for Jim, and for me. Jim hoped that this day could be an occasion to refresh our belief and to keep ourselves from taking God's presence for granted. Mortimer Adler, a teacher at the University of Chicago, said that if he believed what we Catholics say we believe about the Eucharist, and about the Blessed Sacrament, he would crawl on his hands and knees to get it. Dr. Adler never knew Dr. Costigan, who did literally crawl to church and at home to get it. This is the bread which came down from heaven. He who eats this bread shall live forever. Let's not look to be truly satisfied by the material things that our bodies hunger for. We know how these things give enjoyment, but soon go away and leave us wanting again. We eat, but we get hungry later. We drink but we get thirsty again. These kind of things are a natural part of our human condition. They have their place right behind our true priority, Jesus, our Lord and our God. Our faith assures us that He is the source of total fulfillment. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, we are really satisfied. We are not restless. 
That nagging longing, as Jim put it. That nagging longing deep within us can be filled only by the real food and real drink, which is Jesus himself. Is it surprising then that Jim was able to see the best side of life and encourage others to do the same? Is it surprising then that Jim waited and was so thrilled to see the baptism of his granddaughter, Alexi, as a member of God's family? Is it surprising then that Jim Costigan was so able to love as St. Paul explained to us in the second reading. This is the bread which comes down from heaven. He who eats this bread shall live forever. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Jim Costigan, for all the people you put in our lives to inspire us and help us. And above all, we thank you for the gift of the Eucharist to sustain us and nourish us and to lead us on into everlasting life, which is more precious than we can even begin to comprehend. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ the Son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Jim, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. <laughs> For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord. For the family and friends of our brother Jim, that they may be consoled in their sorrow by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The presentation song was one of Jim's favorite. Uh, he always wanted to do it on Sundays, and we had to sometimes talk him out of it so that our music wasn't always the same. Please join us in Jesus is Our Prayer. 109 in the glory and praise. <clears throat>
brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of Jim. May Christ be merciful in judging our brother, for he believed in Christ as his Lord and Savior. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to Christ. Father all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawns. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave him thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith.
Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with his Holy Spirit, and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you, and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints, with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all your saints, on this constant reception, we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Paul, uh, our bishop to Simmons, and all the bishops with the clergy and entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children Remember Jim. In baptism, he died with Christ, and he also shared his resurrection. When Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. On that day, we shall see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you, we praise you forever through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever.
Please be the Lord be seated. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to suffer. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
please join us in the communion song, I Believe in the Son, found in the glory and praise number 22.
Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our brother Jim, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ has prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Jim again in the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Please join us in our song of farewell, found in the Missalette, number on page 78. Praise God from whom all blessings flow is the melody. Jim in this life. 
They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jim, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Our recessional song is Lead Us On, O Lord, also in the glory praise number 111. 